This is One on One. We are pleased to be joined by Dr. Nancy Cervalotti, who is the Director of uh, Neuroscience and Traumatic Brain Injury Research at Kessler Foundation. Good to see you, Doctor. Good to see you, too. It's a pleasure um, to be here. Traumatic brain injury. Describe it. What is it? Traumatic brain injury is any change in the functioning of the brain that results from an external force uh, striking the head. How does um, it happen? It can happen from a variety of reasons, uh, for a variety of reasons. Um, it could be a fall, motor vehicle accident. Uh, concussions are traumatic brain injuries. So traumatic brain injuries vary in severity. You can have a very mild traumatic brain injury, which is more along the concussion spectrum, or you can have a more moderate to severe traumatic brain injury, which results in hospitalization and very often prolonged rehabilitation. You know, um, I've known of your work and the Kessler folks for a long time, but I saw you on with our colleague, Mary Alice Williams, uh, on the nightly news on NGTV News, and you were talking a lot about football. Um, we'll talk about that in a minute. You, you believe football should be banned, tackle football until high school. We'll talk about that in a minute. But the, you, you've also said that as it relates to traumatic brain injuries, which have an impact on the, someone's ability to think and their memory, what is the correlation there? And then we'll talk about some of the therapies connected to helping people with their memories. Well, the, the ramifications of a traumatic brain injury vary widely. It's a very heterogene, heterogene, heterogeneous population. Um, so your brain controls everything you do, everything. Speaking, uh, learning, remembering information, walking, balance, everything you do. So as a result, when the brain is injured, anything can happen as a result of that injury. So you could have balance problems. Um, you could have difficulty walking. You could have, you may not be able to sit upright in a chair. Um, and then commonly you have emotional problems following traumatic brain injuries and you have what we call cognitive problems. Cognitive problems refers to difficulty thinking, um, difficulty processing information, so understanding a conversation, um, and difficulty learning and remembering new information. And in fact, we learn and remember new information every single day of our lives. Mm -hmm. So that has a profound impact on how somebody can function in their daily life. But, but a lot of your work involves retraining yes. the brain. How? Give, give us a concrete example. So one of the programs that we work on is called the story memory technique. The story memory, memory technique. technique. Go ahead. Right. And what we do in that program is we teach patients to remember new information and we give them skills to help them do that. So we teach them to use context and imagery give me for instance. to remember new information. Is that putting you on the spot to do that? No, no, not at all. Not at all. So we as have a an example. Georgette, do we have a picture? Can we do this? We do. Yeah, Let's sure. Play it out. Absolutely. As an example, um, if I had the words uh, butter, mother, uh, and blossom um, to remember. Um, would I see that picture? Would you show me that picture? I would not show you that picture. Okay, go ahead. Um, what I might ask you to do is put that in a meaningful context. Butter, mother, mother and blossom. And blossom, go ahead. Right. So two complete, three completely different words. They have nothing to do with one another. Um, but what I may teach you to do is put them together in a meaningful context and form an image of that context. So what we have here is a picture of a mother and what the person would picture their own mother because that's the most salient image for them. Churning butter, so she's sitting at a device where she's churning butter and there are blossoms around her. Now blossom is a difficult word. Um, some people, many people think bloom, they don't think blossom. So it's a very subtle difference. So as the training gets more and more intricate and we teach patients to distinguish between words like blossom and bloom, you might suggest that the patient, if they're familiar with Washington DC and the cherry blossoms, that they picture the cherry blossoms in Washington DC. And that's why that's what's pictured in that image there. But in the teaching of this, this, if someone struggles with it, can you actually help them in areas where they're struggling to get stronger? Yes. What you do is you go back to basics um, and you tell them, okay, so you need to remember the word coffee. Picture a cup of coffee. And I want you to think of that image. Right. What our research is showing is that when they're doing that, they're engaging different brain regions in the process of remembering that new information. So we do fMRI scans, functional magnetic resonance imaging. That's a, basically a movie of the brain. We're looking at the brain as it's learning new information and we're seeing what it's doing. 
when we look at those scans before treatment, and right. then we look at them again after treatment, what we see is that different areas of the brain are active after treatment. And those areas are the areas that are involved in spatial processing and spatial reasoning. And none of this is invasive? No, none at all. You sit at a computer with a therapist for 10 sessions. It's very short. We do it in over five weeks. Um, and from the before those 10 sessions to after those 10 sessions, we're seeing these dramatic changes in how the brain is able to learn and remember new information. How rewarding is this for you? It's incredibly rewarding. Um, one of the things I really like to do, and we do fairly often at Kessler Foundation, is I speak to consumers. We do consumer conferences, um, and we, we like to talk to them about our research, and we like to hear what their lives are like. The best thing somebody can say to me is, oh, I went through your program, and I feel so much better. My life is so much better. And real quick, you need people? Do you need? Uh we do. Actually, they call them volunteers. What we do you need? We do. We call them participants Just, in our research studies. Um, so if anyone's interested in helping us, we would greatly appreciate volunteers. Could, uh, one second. As, as the doctor's talking, George, could we put up the website for Kessler? Keep talking. Sure. So we're looking for persons who have a traumatic brain injury. Um, we also do research in multiple sclerosis, so persons who have multiple sclerosis. We have the same type of work going on. And also, we need healthy volunteers because what we do in our research is we can pair how the brain is functioning in someone who has a TBI or someone who has multiple sclerosis. We compare that to how someone who does not have those injuries is processing information. I, I gotta do this, one minute left. Why are you saying that we should ban tackle football until young people are in high school? As I mentioned earlier, left, go ahead. as I mentioned earlier, concussion is a mild TBI. It's a permanent injury. The symptoms fade, but the injury is permanent. When someone has a concussion, um, they're prone to have repeat concussions. They're more prone to have concussions in the future. Our youth are particularly prone to concussions largely because their necks are smaller and our neck is what supports our head. So we don't want them to have concussions because they could have lifelong consequences. Don't let them play until they are how old? Um, I would suggest JV or varsity level, um, but I, I didn't say don't let them play because they're, football's a complicated game. There are a lot of things they could start learning about the game. Um, there, are, there are certainly things that they could do at a very young age. It's just the tackling just I think we need to be careful about. Dr. Ryan, thank you so much for sharing such important information about things that matter in our lives so much. Thank you, doctor. Appreciate it. Thank Good you for stuff. having me. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Sure. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by United Water, Investors Bank, New Jersey Sharing Network, Cone Resnick, ADP, United Airlines, and by Fedway Associates. Promotional support provided by NJ.com, Small News, Big News, True Jersey and by the New Jersey Business and Industry Association. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.